Good evening. I'm Joe Ross, future independent candidate for Oregon's House of Representatives District 33 in the upcoming 2022 midterm elections. Thank you for your time this evening. I hope you and those closest to you remain safe and healthy. In the coming weeks and months, I hope you will continue to join me for these little fireside chats to learn more about what I stand for, the issues we are facing, and why we as the citizens of the great state of Oregon should no longer settle for the status quo from our elected officials. As we look toward a new week, I wanted to spend just a little time discussing the last segment in a three-part series focused on Oregon's economy. Last week, I highlighted Oregon's transition over the last three decades into new economic sectors and its positive impact on the Portland metropolitan area. We saw a major in-migration of people who saw our state as a very attractive place to not only visit to enjoy our great outdoors and our hip urban vibe, but to migrate here for a more laid-back lifestyle and our relatively low cost of living. However, it is worth repeating, rural Oregon counties were generally left out of the shift to this new economy and the opportunities afforded to some. I also discussed with you the shaky, uncertain ground we find ourselves on today. As individuals, families, businesses, and our government try to determine what the new normal looks like in the wake of the pandemic, which we have seen is one of the many challenges that has hit our state's economy and altered our way of life. Additionally, we've endured forest fires two out of the last three years. Racial reckoning and the violent fallout that has latched on to those of us who have called for the ultimate end to systemic racism and a growing homeless population that somehow has left our elected officials baffled as to how to eradicate this human tragedy. Furthermore, our elected officials for the second biennium out of the last three struggle with a one and a half billion dollar budget shortfall. Justifiably so, our reputation as a clean, safe place to visit or relocate has seen its very fabric torn by the indecisiveness of our elected officials. We must get our house in order. The strong economic growth of the 1990s and examples of best practices around the country and even the globe should shine the path towards greater opportunity and prosperity for every Oregonian that yearns for a state that offers a world-class education for our children, a state whose streets are safe for everyone, regardless of their race, gender, or creed, and a state whose employers provide robust living wages with deeper meaning so that we rebuild and broaden the middle class. So here we are. The big question in front of us is, what do we want our state's economy to be known for? I believe in the near term, we should be working to achieve continued strong overall growth, greater equitability in the distribution of this growth, a reduction of poverty to the single digits, the end of homelessness, and an abundance of local homegrown talent that is well suited for the jobs of today and tomorrow. So how do we achieve these outcomes? If elected, I will strive for unity among my fellow legislators to pass legislation that addresses real problems, not the symptoms of the problems. I intend to work on behalf of my constituents and Oregonians as a whole to begin the advancement of the most aggressive transformation of our public education system. Two of the cornerstones must focus on, must focus on construction and manufacturing. It is essential that we establish a statewide construction trades foundation, similar to the one found in my birthplace back in Montgomery County, Maryland. As a co-op between the business community and the school districts, it would be in position to promote and encourage the interest of career education related to construction. The program would consist of courses in electricity, masonry, HVAC, carpentry, plumbing, and principles of architecture and CAD technology. It is also essential that we grow our manufacturing sector while there have been major shifts in manufacturing overseas, there are states right here in the U.S. that continue to grow their manufacturing sector and offer strong, growing middle-class wages. Texas, for example, has seen its manufacturing sector grow at a healthy pace, supporting almost 865,000 jobs, with average annual compensation of over 82,000 compared to 47,000 for all other non-farm jobs in that state. By comparison, the average annual income for manufacturing in Oregon is $71,000. But when you exclude high-tech manufacturing, that number drops to $55,000. There are endless opportunities to foster further growth in existing manufacturers and attract those from outside the state that might consider expanding to Oregon. For example, 
we should be working with auto manufacturers seeking to expand manufacturing of electric vehicles. We should also be working with clean energy manufacturers that need to expand their production of products for energy storage, solar, and wind. And to support these manufacturers, right here in Oregon, we benefit from one of the country's most innovative utilities in Portland General Electric that routinely stands at the cutting edge in advancing these interests, as well as numerous nonprofits that advocate for these advancements as well. In future fireside chats, I will share my thoughts on how to improve Oregon's education, but it is worth mentioning here that we must also leverage our colleges and universities to expand our research and invest in human capital. We must push our secondary institutions to attract and prepare the best talent that employers are seeking, including those right here in Oregon, such as Nike, Intel, and Columbia Sportswear, as well as the leading manufacturers of electric vehicles and clean energy manufacturing that could use our state as the launching pad for their expanding interests. I will push for legislation that moves the state to an annual budget cycle in order to be more proactive and less reactive to the changing winds of economic cycles. I will also push for legislation that eliminates the kicker law so that we further address the state's unfunded liabilities, including the $25 billion PERS gap, in order to invest today so that future generations are not hampered by our unwillingness to manage our obligations. And finally, it is worth going on record to state that I believe there needs to be greater equitability in income and wealth. At this time, I do not believe it's the government's responsibility to force a reallocation. However, I do believe that perhaps it's time for greater unionization of semi-skilled, skilled labor across industries to drive what's understood as the union equality effect more broadly. Making Oregon a middle-class state may require policies that reward businesses that raise median earnings and incomes and that bring more workers and households into the middle class, with increased union coverage paving the way for both. As with so many things in our lives as Oregonians, I believe we should hold our state's economy to a standard that's higher than it's ever been. A stronger, more equitable economy that fosters the strengthening and broadening of the middle class. A stronger economy that lifts people out of poverty. And a stronger economy that affords us the opportunity to not only address our financial obligations, but our aspirations as well. By no means do I have all the answers but I strongly believe that the things I have laid out in this evening's fireside chat would help accelerate our state's economic interest in ways we've never seen before. There are numerous difficult conversations ahead and challenging decisions to be made, but I stand ready to unify decision makers to serve every Oregonian's economic interests. Thank you again for your time this evening. If you found value in this video, click the like button and please share it with your friends and family. Also, check out the campaign online at votejoefor33.com, on Facebook at votejoefor33, on Instagram at jmross0243, and on Twitter at joross02. Until next time, strive to be your very best. Strive to help our community be its very best, and be kind to those around you. Heaven knows small acts of kindness go a long way towards enriching the lives of others. Good night.